In today's episode, we're going to talk about a simple perspective shift that will clear disappointment, discouragement, and discontentment out of your life faster than you ever thought possible. But before we get into today's topic, I want to give you a very special invitation to come join me in my totally free brand new five-day podcast challenge. This is the perfect time to get crystal clear on your message, get positioned as an authority in your industry, get ranked on the largest search engines in the world, and streamline all of your online content. That's exactly what we're going to do inside of this totally free five-day podcast challenge. You can get registered at miarenee.com forward slash five-day challenge. And with that, let's get into today's episode. And we're back again with another podcast episode. I'm so excited to be talking about this important subject today. And that is that you're not behind. You're right where you're supposed to be. Imagine if you just rested in knowing that you're right where you're supposed to be. You didn't miss anything. You're not behind and there's nothing wrong. Now that is a paradigm shift for the majority of us. And I'm speaking to you from someone who just had a birthday that I didn't want to have. Also, we just had the new year, right? So anytime there's a new year, there's a new month, there's a new birthday, right? We really tend to reflect on how far have I come? Am I where I expected myself to be? Do things look the way I expected them to look? Does my life look the way I expected it to look? And if it doesn't quite match up with the picture in our head, we become disappointed. We become discontent. We become frustrated. and it's a sad way to live because the truth is we don't know how long we're here. We can't take any of this with us when we go. We have our own perceptions of and expectations of where we think that we should be or what result we think we should have by a certain time. But in addition to our own personal expectations and timelines, we have society putting that on us as well. But then God is so much bigger than that. And he's outside of society whatever society you're in, whatever culture you're a part of, whatever emphasis that culture puts, you know, on to certain expectations and timetables, we tend to take that on ourselves. But God is outside of all of that. God is so much bigger than all of that. And as children of God, if we actually understand that he is guiding us, he is leading us, he has plans for us, that it's not going to look always the way the picture looks in our head or the way that society says. Why? Because God doesn't go according to the ways of the world. In fact, the Bible is super clear on for us not to follow the ways of the world, for us not to conform to the pattern of this world. Yet here we are clinging to expectations of the world, wanting to fit into certain timelines and, and ways of the world when God is beyond all of that. And God has more for us than all of that. God has more than we could ever ask or imagine or even dream up, right? It's like so much better than all of that. Yet, how oftentimes all of us go through experiences of discontentment and disappointment because we're measuring according to the ways of this world. Even though we know the Bible says, do not conform to the pattern of this world. Even though we know that the Bible says that God has great plans for us, even though we know the Bible says that, you know, his ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts. And, and even though we know all that, how often we miss out on the joy and contentment that's fully available to us when we realize that we're right where we're supposed to be. God's got us. He has a plan. It's not too late. And, you know, we're not behind we're right where we're supposed to be. The minute we get that and we're in the present moment, then we can fully hear from God, experience God, and be present in the moment. The only place we can fully encounter God is in the present moment. I'm sure we've all heard this phrase of, you know, the enemy always has us worried about the future or, you know, overthinking, rethinking, you know, concerns about the past. The past is gone. The future isn't here yet. And when we're living in either one of those, we're not present. And the only place we can fully encounter the presence of God and be in his presence is in the present moment. And one of the best ways to bring yourself to the present moment is to remind yourself that you're right where you're supposed to be. You're not behind, you know, um, you don't have to live inside of that lie and then live in this rat race, right? Of constantly trying to be enough and catch up and run on that rat race, that rat wheel, just continuing to go, 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 all being driven out of this fear that you're behind or something's wrong, or you missed the boat or you missed out or whatever it is. 
So from that place, I want to share with you um, on a personal note, just kind of, I don't know if anyone can relate to this. Actually, I know some of you can, because I've talked to many of you who are going through exactly this, but I just had another birthday. We won't talk about how old I am. It's irrelevant. It's irrelevant. I mean, I don't know how long I'm here, right? So the context of age, really, if we knew how long we were here, we would view our age very differently, right? If we're going to live to be a hundred, um, you know, then we view our age differently right now than we do if we only have another couple of years left, right? So all I know is I don't know how long I'm here. I just had a birthday and I will tell you this, the last two birthdays were very difficult for me. Not this one. I actually had a blast for this birthday, uh, all because I shifted my perspective, right? The power of perspective, the power of thought. How are you looking at the things in your life? I mean, a birthday coming, for example, um, there are so many people passing away so young. There are loved ones that I know um, that I'm not going to see again on the side of heaven, way younger than me that have passed away. So who am I to be at all upset about getting a year older? I mean, the perspective to shift is to say, thank you, God, that I get to have another birthday. I can't say thank you, God, for another year, because I don't know that I have even a whole nother year left. But now that I'm officially one year older, when you have a birthday, right? Instead of like grumbling, complaining, worrying, oh no, oh no, life is getting away from me. Instead, it's just, thank you, God, that I get to have another birthday. Thank you, God, for all the amazing people in my life. Thank you, God, for all the lessons and everything I've learned up until this moment and that I still have time here. Now, I'm not saying that it's not difficult here. I think it is difficult here. And, and the truth is, our hope should be in heaven. I don't know about you, but I'm so excited about heaven. Like death does not scare me, not one ounce, because to me, I'm like, that is full celebration. So if I, if you hear of me ever passing away, just know I want you celebrating because I am with Jesus. I am face to face with him and I am living in total bliss in the presence of him, you know, and in the Bible says that there's no more um, there's no more tears in heaven, like all the pain, all the things we go through here. It's, it's not easy. It's difficult. So my point is we have this hope before us. We have this eternal hope ahead of us. We have this hope of heaven and eternity to look forward to. And it really should put into perspective everything we're going through here in this life, that it is all temporary. We're not going to take any of this with us when we go. We don't know how long we're here. You know, the things we get so bogged down by, the things we get so stressed about, and the perspective that we that we could have, the eternal perspective gets warped, and we start to get very focused on the things of this world. So birthdays are uh, an easy one to use as an example right? To shift the perspective because the last two birthdays I had were very painful for me because my perspective was that something's very wrong. Like I messed up my whole life because I have not, I'm not seeing the picture of where I thought I would be in certain results that I thought I would have by this time. And then as a result, I was discontent and disappointed. And that emotion you know, that feeling, that experience breeds certain actions or inactions, right? When you're feeling down, disappointed, discontent, you're going to take very different actions than when you are thankful and hopeful and excited, right? Two totally different worlds. It might be the exact same circumstances, but you're seeing it in a different way and it's giving you a different experience. So from that place of disappointment and discouragement at, at, over my last couple of birthdays, I noticed that I just started feeling like I was putting an expiration date on my goals, my dreams, on me as a person, as a woman, just like I lost my chance. It's it's over. And how crazy is that? I mean, first of all, what am I saying about all the amazing human beings that are older than me, right? But also, how does that at all glorify God? And what about the fact that I'm still breathing and I get another birthday when some of my friends have passed away in the last few years, way younger than me. Um, and I know they're with Jesus and I'm excited for them, but the truth is their time here was cut very short and I'm getting more time here. Um, then, you know, each day is another day that we're here. We don't know if we have tomorrow, but we have today. So in that, um, you know, I know, I know that God is doing an amazing work in me if 
year after year, month after month, you know, I'm experiencing thankfulness. I'm being thankful. I'm experiencing joy and peace and contentment, regardless of circumstances, right? My circumstances aren't really any different than they were in the previous years when I experienced discontentment, disappointment. But now this year, experiencing this abundance of joy and love and just overwhelming gratitude and thankfulness to God, not only for the breath of my lungs, but for the people in my life and for all the blessings that I have in my life. And when I think about the fact that it's just a shift in perspective, right? I notice I'm in such a different place and I I don't feel behind at all because you know what? Kind of the secret to life is that God said the most important commandment of all, of all of them is to love God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and to love your neighbor as yourself. Like that's actually what God cares about more than anything else, as far as our actions and what we do, you could go build the biggest business in the world. You could conquer your fears and put yourself out there and be number one in X, Y, Z field. Like that's cool and all. I'm not putting that down at all. That's awesome. But what's God actually caring about? What does God actually say matters in this life? Right. And if we miss that, then what was the other stuff for? But if we have that, then go for it. Go for your dreams. Go for your goals. Go do whatever it is God has called you to do. Play at a high level. Do all the things. But I'll tell you right now, you're not going to do any of that if you're in a state of something's wrong, I'm behind, I lost my chance, poor me, victim, I don't know, my time is up, whatever stories we tell ourselves. you know, It, it might not even be birthday related. It could just be, oh my gosh, this is another year. So let's look at business, right? You might think, I have been at this business thing for the last three years, the last five years or whatever it is. And how is it 2024? And I'm still not at the income I want, or I still don't have the number of clients I want. I still haven't, you know, hit these certain goals. Like something's wrong, right? We go to something's wrong. We go to disappointment. We go to discouragement. But I'll tell you right now in that state, if you, if you live right now in 2024, thinking something you're behind something's wrong. You should be further along all the things. It is going to leave you in a space of inaction. You're going to be frozen. You're going to be full of doubt. You're not going to come up with creative ideas in that space. And I'm telling you this because I know all about how perspective can shift everything. I can absolutely relate to any space you're in right now. Anything you might be going through, I can promise you I can relate to it because I've felt it and I've been there. But I can also tell you that I've experienced the power of a perspective shift, not circumstance shift. Let me clarify, because circumstances are not always going to shift and they don't have to for us to shift our perspective. But the Bible says over and over and over to give thanks to, to, uh, you know, be thankful to have it, to, to give thanks and all things. And in fact, I think it's first Thessalonians. I'm not going to remember the exact verse. Uh, I'll find it. But uh, in first Thessalonians, it says, rejoice, always pray without ceasing and in everything, give thanks um, for this is the will of God for your life or in Christ Jesus. So if God's will is that we are giving thanks, that we are thankful, do you think it might be super important? Personally, I think thankfulness and going into gratitude and just like, thank you for all of this. And thank you that I'm right where I'm supposed to be. I think that's one of the biggest things to thank God for. Thank you that I'm right where I'm supposed to be. Thank you that I'm learning the exact lessons I need to learn right now to do whatever you're going to call me to do next. And part of why that itself is so powerful is because it snaps you out of thinking you're behind, you missed the boat, something's wrong. If it, if it was ever going to work, it would have already worked. All the lies that we sometimes believe, right? Now, I don't know for you, if you can relate to me at all, where you look at your life and you're like, this isn't what I expected, or I thought I would have certain results by a certain time, or maybe like me in some areas, you have actually gone backwards in certain areas of measurement, right? Whether it be... um I could like name a whole bunch of areas, business, health, all the things, right? If you feel like you've actually gone backwards in certain important areas of your life and goals, oh my gosh, nothing could cause more discouragement and disappointment and discontentment than that. But the enemy knows that, which is why he thinks he has you when those things happen. But if you 
can say, thank you, God, for the lessons in this. Thank you that I'm right where I'm supposed to be. Thank you that I've already had growth in this area and I've already seen breakthrough in this area. So even though this might feel like a setback, I already know and I've already experienced breakthrough in this area. So I know that it's coming. I know that there's more of that coming. We can be in a constant state of gratitude, even if we feel like we've gone backwards or we lost certain things in our life. Maybe you lost financially or you lost in the area of love or you lost in the area of health and you're facing that disappointment. But going into gratitude and thankfulness for the lessons that are in that, for right where you are right now in this moment. Again, often we're comparing ourselves to, well, here's how far I got. Why am I here? This can happen in entrepreneurship a lot. You take 10 steps forward, two steps forward. You feel like you take 10 steps back. And it's like, how did I end up back over here? Well, sometimes that's part of the journey and actually being able to bounce back from that and overcome that and keep a empowered perspective is going to be the difference between going on to have a successful business long-term or not. Right. I've definitely faced those, um, uh, crossroads or split in the road, right. Where it's like, which way are you going to go? Because I'm pretty upset about this and I, I want it to be different, but what am I going to do about it? Am I going to go down victim road and close up shop, shut it all down and just say, well, you know, if I took 10 steps back, then it's over. So bye. Or am I going to go down the other path and say, you know what? I took 10 steps back or I fell on my face, but let's get back up. It's another day. I'm still breathing, still alive. God still got me. He still has plans for me. I don't know. Maybe this is going to just all look different than I thought. Maybe something beautiful is going to come out of this scenario where it feels like 10 steps back, but actually I'm going to see something or learn something that'll give me a better idea than I ever would have had if I hadn't gone st 10 steps back, right? So one of the things I've been looking at with my business as well is like, there's a certain way that I've thought I've had to do things for many years based on how I started online and the successes that I had early on and, you know, what led me to my first $50,000 promotion and $80,000 and a hundred thousand. Okay. Based on those, you can end up in this box of where you think you have to continue to repeat a process, but maybe that's not what God's calling you to in this new season at all. Maybe you're supposed to throw that box completely away and create something totally new that God is leading you to do. Now, I'm not saying there's not proven, um, steps and processes that you want to rely on. I'm not talking about that, but I'm just talking about this kind of like, you know, rut that we get in and we sometimes can feel like we're trying to force an outcome or make ourselves do this certain thing that maybe worked in the past or worked in a different season. And it's just not what you're being called to do this season. And I just believe God has seasons for us. I believe he calls us to different assignments in different seasons, right? And sometimes that's going to look a little bit different. We have to be willing to follow his lead. We have to be willing to let him show us what we're being called to do. Uh, but the most beautiful part of entrepreneurship, whichever way you go, whatever you create, it is the most powerful kingdom impact potential, I believe, because you created something, because you built something, because it's your heart and soul in the creation of it. You have way more say in how you're going to influence through that business for the kingdom of God, right? Just like if you go get a job somewhere or you work for somebody else, you can't go create the culture you want to create. You can't just go tell everyone about Jesus. You can't, you can't set up the things you want to set up spiritually sometimes because there are certain restrictions inside of that job or whoever's running that organization or entity, right? So you're limited. But when you are the entrepreneur, when you're the one creating something, you have so much more flexibility, which means you can have such a bigger kingdom impact. But none of this is going to happen if you're sitting there thinking you are behind, you're broken, you're, uh, you're a failure, you missed the boat, your time is done, you, you know, time is up. If you're believing any of that, then it takes you, it puts you back on the bench. You're not in the game. So I want to invite you to come get back in the game if you have benched yourself, right? Um, and maybe you had a season of sitting out, but I want to invite you to come get back in the game and be creative and do something new. Take some kind of actions, not out of, I have to, not out of, 
well, nothing's ever worked. So why do it again? But more just out of obedience, like God's calling you to it. It's time to get up, face the fears, dust yourself off, whatever it is, and let go of the lies that are keeping you on the bench, right? If it's that you're, I don't know, too old, or um, you've been at this too long, you should have already had results or whatever the lie is. I also want to say, you know, there are people that experience disappointments of, um, maybe you've bought all the courses and you've done coaching programs and you've invested in yourself and you've learned a lot of the things, but you don't feel like it's necessarily paid off. And sometimes you can get to a point of discouragement with that. Like, well, if it was going to work, I, I, it already would have, like, I already invested all this time and energy in myself. And I want to say anything you've invested into learning and growing as a person, anywhere that you have put yourself in an environment for personal development and growth spiritually and entrepreneurial wise, leadership wise, none of that is ever wasted. That's one of the biggest lies of the enemy to have you sit there and think that you wasted any of that. When you are developing yourself, when you are becoming stronger and clearer, even listening to this podcast today, that is input for you. That's personal development for you. That's one little thing in here could just, um, you know, spark that thought or that, or help you clear that that lie. And then you start moving in action, but anywhere you're exposing yourself to things that are going to help you grow and expand and you're improving yourself. You are your biggest asset. You know, God is going to use you in big and mighty ways. And none of that goes to waste personal development, business training, entrepreneur leadership. None of that goes to waste. So just know that as you've accumulated that, You've done something beautiful. You haven't wasted any time and it's all going to be put to use. It's all going to make sense at some point. You just don't know exactly how it's all going to come together because God works it all out that way. But the main thing I want to say to you right now is you're not behind. It's not too late. Start today. You could be 80 and listening to this. I had a 80 year old woman go through my podcast course and I've had other ladies go through it. They're like, just so you know, you know, I'm like 60 and it, this is hard for me. And, you know, I'm pushing through and I just love telling them, yeah, I get that. But I also had an 80 year old just fly through it and launch her podcast. No problem. You know? So it's like, it, we can have excuses about age and time and I don't know, motherhood. I mean, you could list all the things we could use as excuses or we can just go for it and have some fun in the process. Now I will say that in taking on that perspective, okay, okay, I'm right where I'm supposed to be. Like really and truly you're right where you're supposed to be. You're at the perfect starting point for whatever the next steps are. That's the truth. And the lie is that you're not where you're supposed to be. You should be further along, but you're here. So if you believe that lie, you're actually not going to move further along. Why? Because you're already having that failure mindset. I know this because I had it myself where it's like, it, it breeds such inaction and it's like, you're frozen. And I will tell you, if you're an entrepreneur and you need to create content, creativity goes right out the window. Why? Because you're, you're in a lie. You're fully believing a lie and the power of our thoughts, they impact our actions. They lead to actions or they lead to inactions that are either going to build our business or hinder our business, have a step into our calling or sit out on the bench. So as I celebrated another birthday and I got to watch that, you know what? I was disappointed and discouraged and defeated a couple of years ago on my birthday. And now I'm a couple of years older than I was then, right? It's a couple of years later. But age has a different, another birthday has a different perspective to me now. And I'm in a state of gratitude and I'm excited for 2024. I'm excited. Well, you know, I just am, but I will say, I also know it's an election year and things are going to get weird. It is. Tune in for more podcasts as I will share the journey, anything we happen to end up encountering this year. But nonetheless, like I have, I'm on a journey with God that has nothing to do with what the world says about me, what society says I should or shouldn't have or do or be by this point. I'm on my own journey with God that has nothing to do with what leadership does with election year and what happens with our government. You know, when you are on a journey with God, 
it it's all the rest of it is kind of irrelevant. I mean, he puts you in a place here on earth and in positions of leadership and influence and different things to be a light. And, and really when you're walking with God and you're on this adventure with God, you're outside of normal time. You're outside of society's expectations because God is so much bigger than all of that. So if you, I know I'm like, I'm saying a lot in this podcast, but I hope you're just getting that take home of you're right where you're supposed to be. And if you sit with that, take a deep breath right now, like take that in. You're right where you're supposed to be. This is perfect. You're at the perfect starting point for taking that action step that God is calling you to take right now. Maybe it's to start a podcast. Maybe it's to start a business. Maybe it's to step into something new with your health or the area of love or finances. Or I don't know what you've been called to do. Maybe it's ministry, but you're, you're in the perfect place right now for whatever you're being called to do next. So you're not behind. There's nothing wrong. This is exciting. Okay. And by the way, if you're having another birthday coming up and you're having the enemy come knock on your door and go, Oh, look, you didn't meet society standards yet. I just want to tell you just laugh in his face. Okay. Because God is so beyond society's standards. Also your own limited expectations. God is doing something amazing in your life. He's doing something amazing in my life. Now, sadly, two years ago, I couldn't see that. And as a result, it impacted my actions and the way that I interacted with the world. Why? Because if I think I missed out or I missed my chance, imagine how a defeated person walks around versus someone who is excited to do what God's calling me to do, whatever that is, by the way. I have been um, having some fun working on a business that has nothing to do with being in the spotlight at all, which I kind of like. I um, I don't mind being in the spotlight in terms of creating content and serving people if God's called me to it, but I'd prefer not to. So anyway, I have some projects going on I'm excited about. I just wanted to come on here today and say you're not behind. You're right where you're supposed to be. You are so loved. You are guided. You have an amazing God who loves you so much. You're a child of God. He's got great plans for you. So go take action in what he's called you to do and give thanks every step of the way. Give thanks even when you feel like you take five steps back because he's doing something through all of it. And he's working all things together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. God bless. Thanks for tuning into another episode. I hope this really encouraged you and empowered you. Don't forget, we also have the totally free five-day podcast challenge coming up where you're going to be able to get crystal clear on your God-given message. Turn that into a powerful podcast that positions you well as an authority and as a leader in your industry, gets you ranked on the largest search engines in the world, and helps you streamline all of your online content in under an hour a week. You're not going to want to miss this. I'm taking you through all the steps in the totally free five-day podcast challenge. Just get registered over at miarenee.com forward slash five-day challenge or click the link down below. God bless.